This is Mr. Morrow, and welcome to the tutorial for switch profiles on the RetroTank 4K. If you didn't know, the RetroTank 4K is an advanced scaler. It is highly recommended that you familiarize yourself with settings by going to the RetroTank 4K wiki, which is linked in the description. This will be using HDMI from the switch to the RetroTank 4K, and you can follow along with um, any other tutorials you might see. This is going to focus on the Nintendo Switch Online emulators for the Switch, and you do not have to do any of this work. All of these profiles are automatically included with the stock SD card. And of course, if you are playing on your Switch, you don't have to do anything because the Switch is an HDMI console and everything is ready to go. The first thing you will need to do is have your switch connected and turn it on if you just want to play switch games this is good enough this will um low this will scale all of your games twice in both directions to meet the 4k aspect ratio so that's it for just regular nintendo switch play if you would like to play other games including the virtual console games go ahead into the system settings and start setting everything on the TV to TV resolution 1080p. First, the first console we are going to take a look at is the Nintendo NES. This profile that uh, this these settings that I'm going to go over will work for the NES, Super Nintendo, and Sega Genesis games that output in 256 pixels wide. As you see here, we are already in the game. We should not have done that yet because what you should do next is when you've loaded the emulator, go into settings and make sure that you hit pixel perfect because pixel perfect is going to give you a four times scale in both the vertical and the horizontal directions. Now, what does that mean? That means that when you are playing Metroid, all of the pixels will be square. And because we know that everything is scaled four times in every direction, we know how to pre-scale to make this mimic the original NES uh, screen, screen uh, sorry, original NES resolution. So what we're going to do is hit the ADC button on the remote, which brings up the HDMI receiver setup, and that gives us all the options for the HDMI signal coming in. We want to go to input pixels and increase this to four because this is a four times scale. The next thing we want to do is hit the scale button on the remote, which takes us to the scale and crop setup menu. We want to go down to vertical prescale and increase that to one fourth. And as you can see, that gets us very close to the NES's resolution. And what we need to do now is we need to adjust the left, the top trim, bottom trim, left trim, and right trim until we hit the edges of the screen. Now, as you can see, the top is in 228 by 256. Now, normally you think of Genesis, Super Nintendo, and NES games as being 224 pixels wide. The discrepancy comes is that it's actually 240. So let's increase this. Actually, let me see this, 228. So it's a difference of six. Now, normally I do like to just leave this at 240 or leave it at 270, and you'll see why in a minute, or you can leave it at zero. But as you can see, we have a 256 by 240 in autofill integer. In autofill, we can, and this is pretty much it when it comes to getting the square pixels for this image. If you would like, you can go into the scaling menu, hit freeform, and adjust the horizontal scale until it hits uh, something that is four by three for what the Nintendo Switch looks like. And that number is 
2633.14. So we're going to make this 2634. And there you go. That's what the pixel aspect ratio for an NES game looks like. When you go back in the menu, you're going to see that it's very, it's not going to look right, but that's okay. You can still sort of make things out. I remember this is for a game that runs 256 wide. So that means that for the next console, which is the Genesis or Mega Drive, Sega. you're going to want to load up a game like Shining Force, which when you do that, it will also look correct. And I'm going to show you this as an example. Now, the only difference is that on the Genesis, it might be because of these profiles, and I use the NES numbers, the Genesis might be a little too north or south. That's fine. That's why I usually leave games at minus zero instead. and adjust this until it hits uh, nine. Adjust the vertical scaling factor until it hits nine. Great, so this is kind of what a you would expect a Genesis game to look like on your CRT, and it is pretty centered as well. Now, just as a test, let's go to a Super Nintendo game, because all Super Nintendo games also um, output resolutions of 256 by 224. And just as an example, we can use Meg, we can use this. And as you can see, it perfectly encapsulates the game. Um, Oh, this is be happening because I currently have the uh, the four by three. I have it in CRT filter. It should actually be in pixel perfect mode. Oh, that's the wrong game. So let's adjust the left trim and the right trim one more time because they should be the same as it was for Genesis. So there it is, two fifty six wide and it is currently uh, scaled to what it would look like on a CRT. So that takes care of the 256 wide games. What about games that are 320 wide, like Sega Genesis games? Well, let's go ahead and load the default profile and load the Genesis emulator. Check that this is in pixel perfect, and it is. So when you load up Rystar, again, this is a four by a four by four scale. So let's increase the horizontal decimation by four in the HDMI receiver setup menu. Press the scale button, increase that to increase the vertical prescale to one fourth. And as I mentioned, we can go ahead and adjust the vertical and horizontal trends until we hit the edges of, this, of the picture. And this gives us, as I mentioned, 320 by 224. Now, if you like square pixels, you can leave it like that. However, what I like to do is go into freeform, adjust the vertical resolution to nine, and adjust the horizontal resolution to twenty-six thirty-three point one four as well. So we're going to make this 2634. 
And again, this is sort of what a Sega Genesis might look like on uh, stretched to a CRT. No other game that we normally use that we would play has that. But so those are only for most Genesis games on this emulator. So we've loaded back the load uh, the profile. Let's go ahead and try the Game Boy. Game Boy is relatively simple because the Game Boy presents in square pixels. However, you do need to watch out that you turn off any additional settings. So you wanna make it look like a Game Boy or Game Boy Pocket, whichever one you want. Game Boy Color is only for original Game Boy games. You want to make sure that reproduce classic feel is off and display with small screen is off as well. Let's go ahead and load up a game, Link's Awakening. And if you didn't know, a Game Boy game in a 1080p, the scale is 7, so we hit the ADC button on the remote and increase input pixels to 7. Then we press the scale button on the remote, go down to prescale, and increase this to 1 7th. And this gives us close to the original display of a Game Boy. We want to adjust the top, bottom, left and right trims. And let's also make this autofill integer, even though I think it's done increasing vertically, so that's fine. All right, let's adjust the left trim until it hits the left side. And adjust the right trim. And this gives us a perfect 15 by 15 scale of Game Boy games on the Game Boy. And if you'd like, you can also add effects by pressing the SFX button, going down to function, and you can use LCD RGB. You can use, or you can use LCD mono, whichever you prefer. Now, this isn't only for the NSO emulator. If you have a game that is playing a Game Boy game, such as the Collection of Mana, and it is doing the same seven times scale, you can load that game up. Sorry, it takes a second. And it will be it will be cropped because of the way that it's playing, but once you do that and you load up the game, the game is perfectly centered inside of it. And again, this is a 15 by 15 scale, so it works. Unfortunately, it does not work. Uh, these profiles don't work in other games in Collection of Mana because they don't do in integer scale of Super Nintendo games. But now that we finished Game Boy games, let's go ahead and load the default profile and take a look at Game Boy Advance because that does use different those do those do use different numbers. All right, we are going to load up Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga. Oh, before we do that, we do need to check one thing. When you are playing uh, Game Boy Advance, remember, turn off Reproduce Classic Feel and turn off Display with Small Screen. So now that we've loaded this game up, um, a Game Boy Advance game scales six times to 1080p. So knowing that number, we want to increase the decimation by six. So go press the ADC button and increase input pixels until that is six. Press the scale button. Go down to vertical prescale and increase that to 1.6. And we are getting very close to the original Game Boy Advance screen. So what we need to do is increase the top, bottom, sorry, decrease. And we also want to make this autofill integer. Go down to scaling mode and go to autofill integer so that it correctly scales it. All right, increase the left trim until you hit the left side of the border and increase the right trim until you hit the right size of the side of the border. This gives us a, thir a perfect 13 times scale of the original 240 by uh, 160 resolution of the Game Boy Advance. And the Switch already does color correction. If you'd like, you can go and hit the SFX menu, the SFX button, go down to function, 
And you might want to use LCD BGR, which is authentic to what the, what the Game Boy Advance output at the time, or maybe you'd like to use Mono 1. And that's it for Game Boy Advance. There is one last emulator that we want to look at, and that is going to be the N64 emulator. Now, there is something you do need to know about the N64 emulator. And that is the N64 emulator does two things. One, well, it does one thing. It renders the games in 720p. And if you're in 1080p, it does render, it does scale the games from 720p to 1080p. So what you would need to do is go into system settings and go to down to TV settings, TV resolution, and change the resolution to 720p. Once you do that, you can load up a Super Nintendo, you can load up an N64 game. Let's go ahead and do Mario Kart. And what you need to know is that the game renders in 720p. Um, and mixes in some very old assets. However, one of the unfortunate issues is that you don't get a sharp scale from 240p to 720p. And because of that, um, you're not actually supposed to... You're not actually supposed to pre-scale any of this, but if you would like to use scan lines on the RetroTank 4X because the Nintendo Switch Online does not do anything, you should keep the original resolutions in mind. So what we're going to do is hit the ADC button one more time. 240p to 720p is a three times scale. So we are going to increase input pixels to three, hit the scale button, increase vert, and then go down to vertical pre-scale increase that to one third and then the top and the bottom trims are already fully um, fully trimmed so we can trim just the left and right trims and that gets us really really close to 320 by 240 um, and unfortunately it doesn't really get any better than this, I want to say. It doesn't get any better or worse. The best you can do to maybe fill this up is to hit the ADC button, go down to initial phase, and increase that until you maybe hit the full edge of the screen. But as I mentioned, the N64 doesn't actually, N64 emulator doesn't actually render in 240 and then scale. It actually renders fully in 720p and we are just messing around so that we can go down to scan lines and maybe activate some scan line effects that resemble the original N64 on a CRT rather than um, rather than try to use the, the resolution of 720p. That basically does it for, um, and for the Nintendo Switch. As I mentioned, you don't need to do any of this. All of these come preloaded on the RetroTank 5 app, on the RetroTank 4K, sorry, um, as well as a bunch of different resolutions and monitors. You, this is tutorial is really just to take a look at the other, how I get to the profiles that are included and maybe gives you some ideas on how to manipulate the signal so that you can make your scanline effects or make games a little bit more authentic to their original resolutions.